We've got some fresh new young talent doing some things that I know you haven't heard before. One, two, three, listen. You gotta have a like the why, and we know our why. So I you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Yep. Millions and millions of people have done this already. You can get help, you can get a roadmap, you can save a lot of time, money, and frustration. <laughs> Welcome to the Value Add Podcast with K&K. Hey everyone, so today we, I put a post out yesterday, the day before, sorry for the delay, um, covering a couple topics and what Crystal and I want to both talk about what's going on in our industries. Um, the first topic we're going to cover is rates. The second topic is going to be closing loans in this new environment. The third topic is clients backing out of deals. And the last one, we're just kind of just give a general overview of kind of the real estate outlook. And um, so we're gonna jump right into it. So Crystal, you first, commercial, what are you seeing in rates? What's going on and why? So we're getting a lot of calls from clients because they feel like, you know, obviously rates should be low based on what they're seeing with treasuries tumbling and things like that. Maybe it's a good time to walk in. Um, we're actually seeing the opposite across the board. Lenders are either completely deciding not to lend, um, tightening up their guidelines if they are lending, but and they're definitely raising rates. So every day I'm getting notifications about lenders raising their rates significantly. We're not talking about small increases, we're talking about pretty big increases. I just got an email from one of our more competitive lenders that they raised their rates 1% today. Um, Chase, which is probably the you know bank that most multifamily owners know best, their floor is now 4.75 and they have um, just increased or gotten more strict on their underwriting guidelines, even if your loan is locked. So um, there's probably a decent amount of fallout happening at Chase. Um, most lenders, uh, one of the questions Kenny was just asking me as well is can we float the rate? Most lenders are wanting you to lock the rate now in order to move forward. And I would imagine because we're using their resources and if you're not gonna close, it's like, why work on it right now? Let's just wait. So what we're having a lot of clients continue to do is get their information in and have it ready for when rates do drop because right now we are not in a market where lenders are asking for loans. They're actually nicely trying to say, we don't really want loans, but if you need one that badly, this is the rate we're gonna give you and this is what we're willing to do. And it's a lot more conservative than where we were two weeks ago or even a week ago. So um, as of now with transactions, the way that they're moving, um, like I tell people, we're moving forward with people that need to do transactions, but these are very uncertain times and you know things are changing hourly and daily. Um, hopefully we make it to close on these ones without, um, you know, without them canceling or changing their guidelines because that's the environment we're in right now. It's changing daily. As of now, we do have options. You can get a loan if you want, but um, you know, 45 to 60 days is a really long time. And as lenders get more scared and get more calls about people who may or may not be able to pay their mortgages, wanting to know their option, what their options are, lenders are definitely taking more of that wait and see approach. And they're certainly not really excited to take on new business right now. So Crystal probably answered both the rates and closing loans in this environment. What she just said, it's honestly day by day. Just because you're locked in, just because you even signed off, they could change it, yes, because this is the environment we're in. As they get more data, it's changing. So quickly, I'm way quicker with the rates. It's very simple. FHA, VA, Fannie, Freddie, which most of the deals um, in the residential side were doing. Rates have finally, the market stayed out. Rates have come down, so that's great. Um, I think in two or three weeks, I think rates will plummet more. So if you're looking to refi, I'm kind of getting packages in and waiting because all the experts are telling me rates are going to come down. So I'm going to follow their guidance. They're watching the market and they're talking to people that um, they have connections beyond what I have. So that's what the experts are telling them. Um, for me, closing loans in this environment, well, unfortunately for me is the jumbo space. A lot of our jumbo products went away. Um, because there's no buyers in the space. So jumbo and non-QM would be, you know, bank statements or you've got problems with your credit or things like that. You're not a traditional loan. Those markets, unfortunately, like a light switch, as we just said, they just turned the light off. I think they will re-enter the market just like a lot of stuff with Crystal when confidence enters. It's all about confidence, guys. It's not about, well, I'm a great bar. It has nothing to do with that. Like Crystal says, they're getting a lot of calls with what's going on and they're hearing, they're like, let's just, it's a, 
it's a wait and so they're like we have a full pipeline let's close it out let's take a step back everybody's working from home we don't have time for all this that's their mentality nobody's like let's hit the gas pedal in fanny freddy fhav all that guidelines pretty much i would say are the same nothing major they are if you own a business they want to make sure it's open if you're going to close they want to make sure you're employed um and the only big thing they did is if you're county if you're using rental income they want to verify more assets for that so instead of two months they're asking for six months for each property so today. that today <laughs> literally today yeah. so um but and it could change right so as long as your company's open and you're working if not it's you might have to wait i mean it's like i said this is a day by day we're in this environment crystal and i've been through this before so we kind of know how it goes we're not going to sit here and say something and four months from now everything will be back to normal but as today it's day by day um well we haven't been through this specific situation no no before, no but, but we've been through yeah. the financial collapse yeah. where banks kind of tend to react the same right. um crystal so your opinion my opinion you go first clients backing out of deals what i want you to what i'd like to hear from you is maybe some strategies or anything not strategy or anything instead of your client backing out i tell people there's two questions that i ask is if you want to back out great how long do you want to hold the property right because they're like well it might be 20 percent cheaper which is we're not sure and second if they're like i want to hold it for 10 15 years i'm like okay so it's not about the purchase price i think most people are concerned about people not paying rent so do you have any solutions that you came up with or maybe you're hearing or you've done in a transaction recently that kind of help get a client over the hump and close okay so as far as backing out of deals um i'm seeing both sides really so we've seen you know some people backing out of deals that have not released contingencies yet because they feel like there might be more opportunities or loss of value um, and then we're also seeing people who have no intentions of canceling the transaction, but of course their first concern is about rent collection because they have that mortgage payment coming due. So, um, as far as the rent collection, um, what we've been seeing on some of these transactions, especially if you've removed contingencies already and you're not, you know, you're kind of not sure about the deal, but you want to move forward. You don't want to have to fight about your deposit, uh, later on, um, we had a deal that we just closed where they actually negotiated that the seller would agree to cover up any uncollected rent uh, for the first three months of the transaction. That's sort of what they'd seen globally as far as, um, you know, other countries having the shelter in place and businesses being shut down. So that was kind of a safe numbers to say for the first three months. I'll guarantee you can hold that in an escrow or you can hold it with the property manager. You would have to work out the, the details of how that goes. Um, we have had some other people that have backed out because they hadn't gone non contingent and they feel like, you know, values, there's some value going to be lost. I would say if you're thinking you're a short term holder, maybe that's more of a conversation for you. But as you know, historically, uh, at least in San Diego, real estate <laughs> prices have not gone down. They've gone. Uh, up significantly. In fact, um, like 2008 prices versus today is like astronomical. So if you're a long-term holder, real estate's always a good safe play, um, but it may be a matter of time. So if you're looking to flip or short-term hold, maybe you need to rethink your strategy. Um, but that being said, real estate is still always a safe play. And I, over time, you're definitely going to get the value back. So the other thing we're seeing too um, on people back kind of deals in residential, same thing, people getting scared. They think the market's gonna correct or go lower or they're just like, I don't wanna tie my money up right now. My business is shaky or I would rather just have the capital. Some people are probably gonna walk away from deposits and I get it because they'd rather have the money now. You, they, there's something else going on in their other business where they're like, hey, I need the liquidity. I, I didn't know this was gonna happen. The other thing too is that's recently, recently happening is since some people are in escrow and they went to this lender and they said, we can't get you that deal, the rates change. So some people are chasing lenders to say, wait a second here, I was gonna buy this deal based on this loan, this interest rate, this payment, this, and it's this cap rate. So that changes the whole deal. So what they're doing is they're asking and saying, we wanna buy the deal, but they're asking for more time. And most sellers right now are like, if you're a seller and you're a seller, they, you, these people need to understand the times that nobody I'm seeing anybody really fighting about. People are respecting the time and I get it because we are in different times. Like Crystal said, day by day, lenders might just say, even if your files end, submit it, locked, you could be 
ready to close, they could call and say, we just changed the guidelines. And also too, um, we're all having to get used to this working from home. We're all taking an influx of calls. Everybody's calling each other, trying to get a gauge on what exactly is going on, what we see coming down the pipeline. There's definitely going to have to be a lot more flexibility in contracts and timelines and deadlines that aren't going to be met. And those things are completely out of our control. For example, we have a purchase going right now where um, the buyer's trying to get their earnest money deposit in. The contract was accepted, but she can't get a hold of her lender to wire the funds over. Oh, okay. So yeah. yeah, it's coming from um, like an investment account. And oh, so that's right. she's trying to wire funds from her investment account for her earnest money deposit and she can't get through. I have other clients that are trying to call their, their servicer for their mortgage and um, they have questions in regards to their mortgage. They had to leave a voicemail and they were told that they were going to get called back. It's been like five days and they have not been called back. Um, they spoke to someone at the branch and they said, our servicing department is just so inundated with phone calls right now. They will get back to you, but they're just going crazy right now. So these are the kinds of things that banks are dealing with right now. Um, so there's going to have to be a lot more forgiveness. Um, if you don't know already, of course, uh, CAR, uh, the California Association of Realtors, did come out with a new disclosure for COVID-19, which talks about a lot of this stuff and protects you guys against that because these are very un foreseen and uncertain times uh, that we're going to all have to be patient with each other as far as timelines go. Yeah, that's one recommendation. If you're closing deals in this environment and people backing out, everybody's got to understand you got to be patient. Things are going to take longer. Home inspections, I heard appraisals in San Francisco are taking a month or two to get done because nobody wants to go out. It's, 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 it's a problem. So as we get closer to where we're going, things seem to sh be shutting down more and more and everybody knows this so this is that's everybody just realizing and starting to accept it so the good thing is is i think two weeks ago people were like this is crazy we need this done now people are finally understanding like okay we just need to get into this environment in this new world and say let's be patient if we're going to close a deal you'd rather have a slow yes than somebody go you know what too much pressure i'm out of here i'm done because you don't know if you're going to have another buyer on the end um crystal so in closing um i know we've been listening to different things um, we're not going to sit here and predict what we think is going to happen in real estate because that's not what we're going to do. Even if some economist is, I listen to a lot of people. I know you listen to some things. Um, I'm going to give my general, I'm going to lead on this. I'll let you finish. My general consent with real estate outlook is pretty simple in the short term. Um, I think because of lending and certain areas, it even was residential and jumbo and things like that. And let's just say certain products out of the marketplace that's going to cause people to not be able to refi or purchase. So obviously that means people that could buy, could have been buyers two weeks ago or refinance properties. If they, that product is no longer available, those people are out of the market. So that's going to hurt. Obviously I think people that were going to list their homes now are like, you know what? It's not a good time. I don't need people in my house. I've got kids at home. I've got working out of my house. It's not a good time. So I think that's going to get pushed out. Um, there could be some opportunities for people to buy now. Maybe they're going to get less competition. That's good. Interest rates from my stuff is really competitive. So you benefit there. The last thing I would say is nobody knows what the outlook's going to look like, but it seems that all the banks, the lenders and everybody, cause we're all in this together globally. Every single person that's on this planet is feeling this some way or level cause it is affecting your life in one area or another is we don't know what's going to happen. If this is a quick recovery and business back to usual, I'm being told that interest rates will be super low the second half of this year because we're recovering and we're back to normal, but the data is not going to be good. The economy's not going to be good. So they're going to want to drive interest rates super low to get people out there to refi and buy because the real estate market moves the market. It creates opportunity, creates jobs, creates revenue for states, local. And then as far as the outlook look, nobody that I'm following is saying, Oh, real estate's going to crash and this. I think it's a wait and see. If this thing were to drag out for six months and was sitting at home, it would, to me, it'd be a major problem, but that's not what anybody's talking about or seeing. Um, so of course, like Kenny said, we don't have a crystal ball, but from what I see, so much of real estate values come from what kind of financing is available out there and the confidence in the market. So I think those two factors are really going to affect real estate in the short term, but I don't know necessarily that it's going to result in a huge loss of value. I think it's just going to slow down activity. 
uh, significantly. So for example, not everybody's comfortable doing virtual tours in order to write an <laughs> offer and go into escrow. They want to physically look at real estate. So even though we're trying to keep the market going with virtual tours and things, which is great, keep people's confidence up, keep people's spirits up, keep them working and um, networking and things, um, that's going to slow it down just because at the end of the day, you're going to need to walk through that home and or property and see, you know, do an inspection and all that good stuff, which is going to be significantly slowed, if not completely stopped at this point. Um, lenders are, of course, like we said, raising their rates across the board or just not lending at all. That's going to make purchasing difficult and discouraging um, and also would affect pricing because obviously if you can't qualify for the same loan amount at the same interest rate, that's going to affect your return um, on your investment. So uh, people probably are going to want to pause that again, I don't necessarily think it's going to be long term because once we start seeing confidence in the market, people are saying, okay, we can get back to work, we can operate our businesses, we can hire back our employees. Then lenders are going to say, great, we want to lend money now. So we're going to drop our floors, we're going to reduce interest rates, we want to get business, we want to get back to work. And all those things are going to kind of shift and change back into the market that we're we've been familiar with up until uh, this point. So um, it's definitely more of a wait and see approach. Um, and while we're all trying to do business right now, it's going to be slowed. And I don't think anybody's really excited to start anything new um, <laughs> right now. I think we're all just hopefully enjoying the time with our families, it's enjoying the, the pause. And um, there's a lot of things changing on a daily basis and a lot of uncertainty. So I think it's more about taking care of ourselves kind of emotionally, taking care of our families and spending quality time that we wouldn't otherwise be spending with each other right now. So um, that's what I see from my side. And, you know. Cool, well guys, uh, thanks for watching. If you do watch this, um, we are gonna do another video. I don't know if we'll have time today, if we're gonna put, but this will come out after this one. We are going to dive into more of the property management, what we're hearing from other experts um, in the industry, what big syndicators are doing, what mom paws are doing, what other manager properties are doing, what, um, you know. Some tips, and, some tips and tricks basically about how to keep your buildings operating, how to make sure you are paying your mortgage, getting your tenants to pay their rents, and also having compassion at the same time. So there's, it's definitely very much of a people business. So we're going to focus on that in the next video on, um, you know, maintaining cash flow as best you can while also having that compassion and that communication with your tenants. Anyways, thanks for watching. Stay tuned.